Welcome back guys. All right, I have a Ford here that needs a uh, ignition lock cylinder replaced. Okay, so we bought the cylinder and I opted to use the original because of obvious reasons I don't want the customer to have to use multiple keys. Um, you know, for the door, this and that, it's, uh, it's unnecessary. So, uh, when I called the parts store, I asked for an uncoated cylinder and uh, he asked me, oh, who do you use to code them? And I said, I code them myself. And he says, oh, he said, how'd you do that? And I said, ah, maybe I'll make a video on it. Um, don't know if any of you guys care. I'm sure some of you guys actually do this and it's really not a big deal. Maybe some of the do-it-yourself guys don't. Maybe some of the techs don't. I don't know. Um, but I figured it was something to do. So, okay. So here we are. I'm at the desk. Um, I'm going to tell you like this. Make sure you work in a clean environment where you're not going to lose things. Um, I'm going to show you my setup here, what I'm doing. I just got a piece of cardboard and I have... Uh, I have a couple of things laid out. This is the new, I'm sorry, this is the old cylinder. This is the new cylinder. And here in the bags that I did not open are the components for the cylinder, the tumblers and such, springs. Um, I think the springs are here. I should have checked that before I turned the camera on. Yeah, there they are. These springs are microscopic, okay? So these like to go bouncing all over the place, and that's not a good thing, all right? and uh, be careful. Here's the grease. Okay. I tried to do a video once on one of these I think and uh, I was too distracted. I had too many things going on so I'm gonna try it again and if it works out I'll actually upload it. If it doesn't then I may have springs flying all over the shop. Either way we'll have a good time. First things first. Here's your old lock cylinder. On a lot of these, on a lot of cylinders, the way these are, the way they're designed, is that the uh, the assembly inside where the tumblers and springs are would come in and out this way. Okay, so this would come off this cap, and uh, you would remove the cylinder. You would turn the key to the on position and pull it out, and then you can work with the old one. I don't know the codes here for the for the key. So I can't just start putting tumblers in here. I mean, I know some of you guys out there could look at the key and you know right off the bat. Um, I used to do that with the Saturns when I worked for Saturn, but uh, that was a really long time ago, and I don't remember enough about it, so I'm not even going to play with it. What I do is I take the old one apart, and I match the, um, the tumblers one for one, and then I go from there. So what you can do, I'm just going to show you this... Uh, this is not necessary, but I like to do everything a specific way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a spot on my assembly here and on the housing. And that's off. Okay? That's, that's my off position. All right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the key... I'm going to insert it and I'm going to turn it to the on position. This again is, is not 100% necessary at all. You don't have to do this. But I like to do this just to uh, just have a reference, okay? Just in case. You never know. As I was saying before, on this particular model, the key does, the, the, the assembly does not come out of the housing from here. So you need this tool. When you put the tool, if you notice on the back here, there's going to be slots. It's going to fit in. Now, if you put it in the wrong way, it will not seat, as you can see. These are different lengths. The seat against the housing. At that point, put your ignition key in. Turn it. Partially, rather, I'm sorry, put it in partially and turn it all the way on. Re remove your tool, and as you do, it's all going to come out, okay? Very simple. Okay, so we're back, and um, we're going to 
try to get back to on track here. Sorry about that, guys. I have to record this narration. What I'm doing here is I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm going to pull each one of these um, tumblers out. They should pull out fairly easy, okay? You just got to get them right. They'll come out. Uh, you're not going to break anything. And what we're doing here is we're going to look at the number. As you can see in the video shot here, uh, there is a number. It's not coming in too clear, maybe, but uh, it is there. It's going to be 1 through 5 is going to be the number. And basically what you want to do is you're going to take... Uh, what the bags the, the bags are all going to come numbered as well. They're going to have one, two, three, four, and five on the bag, so that correlates to what's inside. Uh, when you open them, always just verify that you did pull out the correct number. I, I mean, I haven't really seen them put in wrong, but it could happen. I don't trust anything like that. So you're taking your you're going to take your new spring at this point, and um, like I said, with these springs, you need to be careful. They're extremely uh, finicky. These things will go flying all over the place. When they come out of the bag, most of the time in the bag they're twisted together and um, they usually give you one or two extra ones. That's one good thing. But you need to be careful not to uh, not to lose them. I like to put them in a spot here where uh, you know where I have all of them together. If you have a you know a, pay, uh, a little box you can put them in a box so they don't uh, you know go flying on you. Uh, and all you're going to do is you're going to you're going to put your spring into the hole, the larger side of that uh, opening there where the tumbler goes in. You're just going to put that in there, all right, just like that. It just pushes in, uh, sits inside there, and then you're going to put the tumbler, the numbered, the numbered uh, tumbler back in the correct area. And it's a, it's not going to snap in or anything like that on this design. It's only going to sit like that. So make sure you don't turn this over or drop it. I did put grease in here as well. Um, the grease is going to keep uh, anything that I put in there, you know, a little bit more secure uh, than not having grease. And you do need grease in there anyway, regardless, because you know you want everything to move smoothly and stay lubricated. So make sure you grease it. It comes with a packet of grease. Uh, I put it in. I put the grease in there when the tumblers are out. And then I also put grease after the fact, after everything's put together, before I slide the cylinder into the housing. And we're just going to go along here, and we're going to put each individual one in by the correct number, according to what we pull out, okay? So, whatever number comes out of the, uh, of the hole that you're working with, that's the same number that's got to go back in. If you screw this up, you are not going to have a working lock, so just keep that in mind. It's very important. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our cylinder and we're going to lubricate everything so that so that all the moving parts have grease on them, okay, on the outside, the inside. And um, that's really all we're going to do here. We're just going to pop some, we're just going to take some of this grease out of this bag here that we got left and we're going to smear it on so that uh, everything is nice and, uh, you know, moving nice and easy and smooth. So obviously that's going to give your your um, your lock cylinder more life and uh, you know less binding and all that stuff through its use okay uh, so just grease it up good don't be afraid it ain't gonna hurt anything and uh, all you're gonna do is rub it across make sure you don't knock out any of these uh, these pieces while you're doing this do this gently take care and uh, that's it you just pop your cylinder back into the housing and make sure your key goes in uh, and that it turns properly and that's really all there is to doing this okay this is not a difficult thing it's only gonna you're just gonna make sure that it turns here um, as long as as long as everything turns excuse me as long as everything turns smoothly the operation is nice and smooth the key comes out no problem and uh, that's it you're set now all that you really have to do is pop this uh, pop this unit back into the vehicle once you know that the uh, once you know that everything is set here. Now I like to lubricate everything on the inside as well. Okay, I'm going to put some grease inside here just because that's that's the part that turns inside of the housing. So I just want to grease all of that. The grease will, you know, get in there a little better once you turn the key on and off a couple of times, and uh, 
that's it. Just make sure you push it in nice, turn the cylinder again, um, smear the grease inside there, and that's it. This is, um, you know, one of those things you want everything well lubricated. And once you have this together, that's really it. It's gonna once it's locked in position, the key is out. It will not fall apart on you or anything like that. Um, the only way it can fall apart is if you have the key in the on position, and we're gonna have it in the off position, obviously. And uh, as I showed you in the beginning, we needed the tool to remove this. Now, you see this picture here shows a locking uh, ring. That ring comes in this kit, okay? You do not use it on these. It does not go on the, it did not come off the old one. It does not go on the new one. That's for a different design, which I'm honestly, I'm not a locksmith by any stretch, so I really don't know what that's for. Uh, I had asked a local locksmith one time. I brought a kit to him to ask him about it. And I was just curious, and he said that he has no idea what it's for either. He's never seen it in use. Uh, he said that these do not ever use them that he's seen. So uh, maybe one of you guys out there has done one and you've seen it. I don't know. I haven't. Um, if you do, leave it in the comments. I'd like to know. I'm just curious. I have to know why all the time. It's one of my biggest problems. Um, people always tell me to stop asking questions, but whatever. Um, so that's it, guys. At this point... Uh, I'm just going to go back and install this lock into the vehicle, and um, that's going to be it. Uh, again, I, actually, what I was showing here uh, that I forgot was I mark, I make these little boxes to mark each number as I take it out. I didn't do it in this in this case, but it is good practice to do that. So as you take one out, you put a number into the box that correlates to it. However, you decide to set that up, and that way at least you'll have them in order and if you screw something up along the way and the lock doesn't work you'll be able to go back and reference that um, you know everybody does things their own way I, I've done enough of these where I really don't feel that I have to do that anymore um, I'm proud to say that I haven't really screwed one of these up so um, you know but if you're starting out and you're afraid to do this and it's your first time I recommend marking everything uh, and taking great care because otherwise you're gonna end up with a pile of parts that you're gonna be going to a locksmith to fix for you uh, we want to avoid that. So that's it, guys. Um, that's how to recode a, a key cylinder for a Ford. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.